Okay, folks, it's time to continue our quest at cloning the Mark 262 Mod 1 ammunition from Black Hills. Where'd that box go? This stuff. Yeah, this stuff. If you didn't watch the last video, you're going to be lost. So go back and watch the first video where we tear apart some factory ammo. We do some baseline testing with the factory ammo and we go into a lot of depth. Today, it's time to get loading and it's time to get shooting. So we're going to skim over a lot of things. If you're lost, just go back. First things first, last video, we suspected that the bullets out of our Black Hills ammunition were actually Nozzlers rather than Sierras. If you remember this picture, you'll see that the ones on the right are the Sierras and they're a little bit longer than the ones that we pulled out, which are on the left. Now at the time, I didn't really have my brain engaged properly. I was, I had a, a box of uh, 77 grain Nozzlers sitting right back there. These do not have the cantalure. I bought these to test in, uh, in our 22 Nozzler series. So these do not have the cantalure. So I confidently pulled them out, expecting them to match our pulled bullets pretty closely. And they are different as well. Here's a lineup. Okay, on the left, we've got our custom competitions without the cantalure. In the middle, the middle five are the ones we pulled. And the ones on the right are the Sierras. So our nozzlers on the left are shorter than the ones we pulled. And it's uh, something like 10 or 15,000. So it's almost like three steps on the same set of stairs. Match King's longest, pulled bullets middle, and at least these nozzlers are short. Now, I have ordered some of the 77 grainers that have the cantalure. So I'm hoping that they're gonna match our pulled bullets better. Didn't, ha didn't get them in time for this video, so the next video, we're gonna have the, the proper nozzler bullet to compare. So this series is changing a little bit. We're gonna shoot both bullets, so we'll probably navigate it powder by powder. We'll pick a powder. We'll do a first video where we get some initial baseline readings for velocity across the charge weight range and look at pressure signs and all of that stuff. And then if the powder looks promising, then we'll have a follow-up video or maybe even a second follow-up video where we try to narrow it down and see if we get good accuracy at that magical 2750 mark that we saw out of our Black Hills factory ammo. The primer situation. We also were not able to identify a primer in the last video. The CCI number 41 looked the closest. That's what we're gonna be using today. However, somebody sent me some pictures over on Facebook of some Remington seven and a half primers, which I don't happen to have on hand, and they look like a really, really close match, if not perfect. So I'm gonna try and get some Remington seven and a half primers. If, they, if the ones I buy are a closer match with how they look and what they weigh, then we'll switch over to those. Cause yeah, the guy who sent me the pictures also weighed them and they weighed the same as what we pulled. So I'm hoping, yep, maybe Remington seven and a halfs are gonna be the ticket, but today it's CCIs. The powder for today is going to be accurate 2520. This was one of our selected powders that we were you know, gonna test first. This one has potential. And the reason why I wanna use this guy first is that Western Powders, who makes accurate and ram shot powders, has got really excellent 5.56 data. And they have data for this powder and the 77 grain Sierra Match King. The maximum charges, so in, in the last video, we used quick load to come up with some, with some ballpark numbers. And the number I came up with was 23.9 grains. But if we look at the accurate load data, they say 25.5 grains. So that's 1.6 grains of difference. That's a ton. A couple additional clues. The overall length we found in the for the factory ammo was around 2.245. Actually, 2.246 was the most common overall length we saw in the box. So that's what we're going to go with is 2.246. So we are 15, so we ran the numbers 15,000 shorter than what the accurate load data says. Right? Shortening that overall length, reducing the effective, you know, case capacity for powder, that's going to bump up pressure and velocity probably, I hope. So that, I think, accounts for some of this disparity between what we found and what Accurate says. So like I said, we're gonna go with an overall length of 2.246. What I wanna shoot is 23.0 up to 25.0. So we're still a half grain short of Accurate's max charge, but I think this overall length being shorter is gonna account for that. I don't wanna load up those 25 fives and just, uh, and just end up having to pull them, and I suspect that's exactly what would happen. So we've got a our, our brass is a batch of Lake City brass that we talked about in the last video. I've got, I've ended up with uh, 90 pieces 
to work from. So that's, that's kind of going to be our initial brass supply. These first 50, I've been prepping these guys here over the last few hours. So, and, and I had the camera rolling. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with prepping this brass and then we'll just roll right into reloading. So let's go back in time. You can see they're all shiny and pretty and ready to load right now, but they didn't look that way a little bit ago. So, so first things first, I'm taking these uh, 89 pieces of brass that I have and just popping the caps out of them with a universal decapping die. And then I'll be putting these guys in my wet tumbler. And after then, yeah, this guy's got a boogered up neck. These are range pickups for the most part. So, you know, that's not uncommon. That one wasn't so bad. I was able to get to, uh, get to the primer and get it popped out. No problem. But sometimes you're not all that lucky and I've made it a little way through the box already. I've picked up a couple, couple others that are in, yeah, a little bit bad shape. That one's probably okay. We can probably just. Get that guy to go up in there. Yep, that one's no problem. Of course, you want to inspect it. Make sure that it's just a, a ding and that it's not a crack or a split or anything goofy like that. So no problems there. But this one, like here, I don't think it'll go. I don't think I can get it up inside of the die the way it is. So I'll just grab a something handy. It doesn't look like it'll screw it up too much. Like here's an Allen wrench. See if I can get, yeah. So the Allen wrench goes in there. And then I'm just going to kind of bend that neck out in a couple spots. There we go. That looks much better. Now we can decap it. So all that'll get ironed out. No problem at all whenever we get to the resizing portion. So our decapped brass has spent a couple hours in the wet tumbler. So it's all clean and stuff now. And now I'm just doing some resizing. Yeah, you can see these guys are looking shiny and new now. So they're tumbled. Today's die is my Redding full length small base resizing die. It's done a pretty good job for us. We've never had any function issues or anything related to resizing. Sometimes I wish I hadn't bought a small base die, you know, just so I didn't work the brass too much. But this guy's always done a good job for us and we've, we've loaded some good ammo, you know, some accurate ammo with cases out of it. So not complaining too much. So once these cases are resized, we're going to have uh, quite a bit of other little prep that needs done as well. So let's get through these guys and pull out the case prep center. So I've got more operations that I want to do than I've got positions here on the case prep center. So of course we are going to trim. I'm going to trim to right about 1.755. Normal trim length is 1.750, but I want to leave them just a touch long here at first. And then of course that means deburring and chamfering the mouth of the case. You know, yeah, got to do that. So since these had crimp primers, I want to use an RCBS military crimp remover. And sometimes with Lake City, the primer pockets are a little bit shallow. Yeah, a little bit, you know, a little bit lumpy feeling, but you're sure you got it all the way in there, whatever. They're a little shallow sometimes. So I like to run them through a, uh, this is a Lyman primer pocket uniformer. So that'll cut that to a uh, consistent primer pocket depth. And while we're at it, might as well grab the flash hole deburring tool and make sure that there's no burrs in the flash hole. This Lake City brass is generally pretty darn good, but might as well. So this guy, let's see what it starts out with here. Yeah, starting length is about 1.758 or 1.757. So let's run this guy through. Okay. 
and that guy would be all done. Now it's still got some lanolin case lube on it. So I'm going to get them all to this point. Then we'll put them back in the tumbler just for a few minutes in some hot water with some soap to get the lube off. And these guys will be ready for primer powder and bullets. So I'm installing our primers with this RCBS hand priming tool. That's my usual way of priming. It's the way I've found works best for me. And if you're not used to priming military brass that's had the crimps removed, you never quite get it all. Like they never quite prime as smoothly or easily as, reg as uh, uncrimped brass. But what you generally do is like kind of, you try and start it and then if you just keep rotating the case, you'll, I don't know if you heard that little pop, that was the primer starting. That's just what I found. Usually if you, you know, try to start it and then just slowly turn, you'll generally find a spot where it wants to just slide right in. So this has been the workflow here. I'm almost halfway done with bullet seating. Measure out the charge with the Lyman Gen 6. It's doing superb with this 2520. Little bit of powder. Flakes getting loose of the pan there from, uh, from splashage. That guy was about six one hundredths heavy. Pretty darn close. And there we are. Our case fill here with 25 grains is not quite as much as I thought it might be. Let me see if I can get a flashlight down in there. Yeah, I guess you can kind of see it, but it is definitely still below the shoulder by a little bit. And I don't think it's going to be compressing at all. Because the last one at 24.5, go. Eh, yeah, I can feel a little bit left in there. So we've got room to go up here with 25.20 if we don't hit our velocity numbers this time. So I haven't taken the time to get a new seating stem for my Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die. So I'm using my standard Redding bullet seating die. Yeah, I can still feel a little bit of, a little bit of room left in the case. You know, our overall length of 2.246, we're in the right neighborhood. And with the Leaf Factory crimp die, I still consider this on the light side. If you happen to watch my crimp test video with the Bob's Bullets 55 grain full metal jacket, we kind of came up with a little bit of a system of, you know, trying to identify how heavy our Leaf Factory crimp die was set. And this is at the lightest setting that we found uh, did much of anything. Now I'll try to get a closer picture, but there is, you can see a little bit of a, yep, ring there where our crimp die touched the case. And like we saw in the last video, we wanted about 0.245 right at that crimp. And that's what I've got it set. So down on the neck, 247, and up at the crimp is 245. Yeah, whenever I get it straight. But so that's that's how I did that. I've also been spot checking some of these guys as I go along in the uh, you know the little Lyman ammo checker. No problems at all. Everything's going right in and falling right out. All right, so it is time. Make sure all my cases are still empty. Yep, it's time to switch over to the nozzle bullets. I better go ahead and back out my seating die right now, just in case I forget. Man, I put a grip on that guy. There we go. Yep, we'll be starting all over with uh, seating die settings.
Once I get my Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die back in action, hopefully we can figure out how much difference there is in the two bullets and be able to dial, you know, the micrometer back and forth between the two bullets. But at least in this case with a standard seating die, it's best to just back it all the way out and start all over from scratch. Okay, we are right down here to the end. These are the last five Nosler bullets. I am crimping these. They don't have a cantalure, but this crimps pretty darn light. It's the same setting I used on the other one. That might be a stupid idea, but that's fine. This, this is the only video where we'll be using the ones without the cantalure, so whatever, man. I don't think it'll hurt things, but if it, if the nozzles really don't shoot well, then we'll keep it in mind and you know, next time we'll, be, we'll have a cantaloupe anyway. All right, let's get to the range. All right, guys, we've got a target at 100 yards. It's always gonna be 100 yards. If I ever forget, you can safely assume that it's 100 yards. My gun here, the heart of the operation is an 18 inch white oak armament SPR barrel. The upper and hand guard are from Palmetto State Armory, six to 24 power scope, and all of the other details, I'll just have them down in the description if you want more info about the gun. Here's how I wanna start this. Let's do this like battle rap style. Sierra versus Nosler. Punch, counter punch, all of that. So we're gonna start out the program by shooting a five shot group with our Black Hills 77 grain open tip match factory ammo. I think we should do this occasionally and hopefully under varying weather conditions and things of that nature so that we can get a bit of a blueprint uh, for the velocities on these dudes and how much it swings and whether it follows temperature and all of that. And plus it lets us uh, you know, make sure we got our eye in and that we're ready to rock. So these are gonna be the first five rounds, totally cold gun. The gun hasn't been touched since we I shot those 15 rounds in the last Mark 262 video. The bolt was still locked back from the last shot in that video. So let's shut up and get started. Five shot group. Yeah, I kind of pulled that fourth one. I knew it was me as soon as it went off. All right, let's move on to 23.0 grains with our Sierra bullet, which is our top left dot. All right, that's an excellent start from Sierra in the accuracy department, but we've got a long way to go on the velocity side of the house. So I'll be expecting to see a little bit less velocity from the Nosler because it's a shorter bullet. We're shooting, shooting the same overall length. There should be less of this bullet protruding into the case, which you would think would lower pressure just a touch. But let's find out, 23 grains with the Nosler. All right, so that was just a touch faster than the Sierra 2520 as opposed to 2536. So they're pretty close, that's good. Okay, back to the Sierra 23.5. Okay, back to the nozzler. Wow. Certainly didn't feel like the shot went out there. Velocity on that shot was normal. 
Very weird. Okay. Okay, so our velocities with the two bullets are almost identical. Only one foot per second separate them. The gun's getting a little bit warm. This is our fifth group. This is normally about the time I take a break. I wanna hurry up and shoot these Sierras after shooting that crappy nozzle group. Interested to see what they do. So, all right, let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. 24 grains. All right, now time for an extended break. We'll let this guy cool off. These velocities are interesting. So we're up to 2650, that's good. If the trend continues, I mean, they're, we're jumping up a little over 50 feet per second per half grain. So we might get to 2750 after all, assuming the pressure signs continue to look good. All right, time to shut off the cameras, take a break. Okay, so I took a nice long break, gave my eyes time to rest, gave the barrel time to cool down. It is nice and cool now. So next up is the 24 grain nozzle. Let's see if these groups tighten up on a cold barrel, or a cooler barrel, I should say. That felt like a good shot. What the hell are these things doing? Did I jack them up with the crimp? Or what is happening? <sighs> All right, 24.5 with the Sierra. Outstanding, 2689 and it was trying to shoot them through the same hole. We're gonna get closer than I thought we were going to, no doubt about it. Nosler. So we still have no pressure signs to speak of with either bullet. So we can move ahead here. Our last charge with the Sierra, 25.0. All right, so our first shot was 2,774 feet per second, which is right about where we wanna be. And this is the first piece of brass that I do notice a slight little ejector circle. No, uh, no rim damage that I can see. Case is in really good shape. Just that tiniest little ring. That is awesome. Let's see if they'll group. All right, 2761, 13.2 feet per second standard deviation. That is pretty darn close to what we're looking for. Rest of the black brass looked, looked pretty darn good. A little bit more ejector, you know, swipes, but nothing terrible, just the very, very light kind. So back to the nozzler, 25.0 grains. All right, good deal, folks. Let's get back to the bench. See if we can make any sense of this crap. All right, let's start out with a quick look at the brass and it 
better be quick because there's not really much to show you here. These all look pretty nice. So row number five would be our max charge of 2520 with the Sierra bullets. Let's see if we can find a little ejector swipe. I know there were a couple. They're very slight. Is that one right there? Is that what that is? Yeah. So very slight, no problem. Certainly no rim damage or bending or any violence going on whatsoever. Nice round case mouths, no dings on the side. Perfect. And it's pretty much the same thing throughout, including the five rounds of the Black Hills that we shot. Here's an up close look at the, at a fired piece of Black Hills. No pressure signs whatsoever. So this was a quick series. I guess we're done. Right there it is. 25 grains with our 77 grain Sierra Match King. Gave us 2761. 13.2 feet per second standard deviation and a 957 group. That's promising. That is incredibly promising. Because our Black Hills was a 704. Kind of pulled that one. That one was on me. That was headed towards a nice group. So as far as velocity goes, we got there with both of them, really. 2744, almost there. So like something like 25.2 grains, somewhere in that range. We might need to explore that a little bit more. Our best group was the first group with the Match Kings. This was a 591. And this was almost a crazy good group. And if not for that guy right there, that would have been in the ones, but it didn't happen. The Nosler, <laughs> this is getting ridiculous, right? I, I cannot get any Nosler bullet to shoot for me. I just can't. The first group was a 922. I guess that's respectable, but then it just went ridiculous. 2.73 inches, 2.29 inches. Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. So by my count, we have shot 17 groups with this barrel using 75 and 77 grain bullets. So today we had 11 groups with the Match King and the custom competition. Last video, we had three 10 shot groups with the Black Hills. Or no, I'm sorry, three five shot groups with the Black Hills. And all the way back to the barrel break-in test, we shot some of the 75 grain Hornadies with AR comp. It was a really good shooter. Yeah, in the last video, a lot of people mentioned, you know, the Hornady in the in the comments. It's an outstanding bullet, and my barrel's already shown that it likes it. But this is a Mark 262 clone video, so sticking with the Sierras and the Nozzlers for he, for the for the time being, we'll get to the Hornadies definitely. So as you can see, three groups well under an inch. Last video, three groups well under an inch. Today, four groups over an inch, including two that were over two inches. So out of 17 groups that we've shot with this barrel, there are only four over an inch and they're all this stupid nozzler. The only thing I could think to blame it on is maybe the crimp, the little bit of crimp that I put on it. Is this freaking bullet such a little snowflake that it can't handle a little extremely light crimp? The good news is that, you know, this is the only video where we're going to shoot the regular custom competition. I've got the ones with the candelure on the way. It'll be, you know, a day or two before I just ordered them yesterday. So it's going to be a couple days before our next Mark 262 video. But by then we'll have the correct nozzle. We'll be able to line them up again because the video from earlier where I showed all three bullets side by side, I just now kind of had a chance to look at that, that video myself. And you know, I see a lot of things on video that I miss with the naked eye. Maybe this Black Hills ammunition, maybe these aren't nozzlers. Maybe these are Match King. I don't know. Maybe we're looking at uh, just some pretty extreme, you know, lot variation between their Sierras and our Sierras. I don't know. Hmm. 
maybe we just picked the wrong powder for the nozzler. You know, the nozzler just hates 2520. That happens. Pretty much every bullet you can find a powder that'll make it shoot crappy. I hope that's it, and I hope this is just a funny coincidence, but I can't ever shoot a good group with nozzlers. Kills me. Another thing I want to start tracking, I wrote it on the target today, and I'll, I'll start doing the same. Like it was 84 degrees, 76% humidity, pressure was 1014.9, uh, and falling. So I'll try to start tracking that, and maybe, you know, later on in this series, we can try to make sense of maybe any, you know, velocity variation we get with our Black Hills factory ammo and see if the same trends follow in our other ammo. You know what might be a decent idea for this series is each time we land on a good load or a load we think is potentially good, like this 25.0 grains of 2520, might be good to load up like 15 or 20 of them. And then, you know, the next video where we do like a verification another verification group with Mark 262 with, you know, with the Black Hills, we also do it with our potential good load that we've come up with, you know, having uh, even a, a several loads that we did that tried in, in different weather conditions, environmental conditions, and seeing if their velocity tracked together or whatever. I don't know, man, just brainstorming here, just throwing it out there into the universe, you know, just, just kind of, Letting it breathe, letting the ideas breathe. So what I'll probably do next video is move on to a different powder. Let me go back to our powder list. I've got so many pages of notes on this project. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe CFE 223 next or maybe Lever Evolution, the one that we don't really have any load data for. I think one of those two guys will be next and we'll see if, you know, maybe that, maybe the, maybe the proper nozzle bullet will actually shoot for me. I'll tell you what though, this does, this is another good example I've mentioned in my videos before. You got to be careful with the 5.56 data over at Western Powders, like, you know, our, our accurate load data, where they said 25.5 grains was their max. We only went to 25 and already got to 27.50. Imagine if we had gone to 25.5. We would have been close to breaking 2,800, but our brass probably would have been trashed. I think it, it probably comes down to overall length. You know, like I said, their load data showed 2.260. We use 2.245 or 2.246, so that 15 thousandths appears to have made a difference. So like I said, you know, with our very light pr pressure signs, we could definitely maybe go just a touch farther with 2520, but if we're cloning our Black Hills, it doesn't show any pressure signs. So I would like our load to not show any pressure signs, you know? So we're really, really close with 2520, and we're just gonna have to try other powders to figure out whether, you know, we just got lucky, you know, the Western load guide basically handed us this as a load, you know, and, and helped kind of verify all of the crazy talk we did uh, in the last video about burn rate and all of that. So yeah, we need more testing to find out whether all of my theories and nonsense and my selection of powders was right. But one powder in, we're looking like geniuses. I think that's where we'll end it for today. Like I said, the next uh, Mark 262 cloning video will be a couple days from now. Tomorrow is going to be a Bob's Bullets test. That's our uh, 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail that we've been testing. Eight cents a piece. Shoots pretty darn good. So be sure to come back and check that out. But if you want to help out, kick in a little to the bullet budget around this place. Check me out at patreon.com reloading. And I will see you guys tomorrow.